So we're going to get into my favorite topic. I love teaching people the basics of the stock market. I think that uh, most people are invested in some type of 401k or IRA at work, and a lot of them have absolutely no idea what any of it means, how to read their 401k. Uh, so I'm pretty passionate about teaching people the basics of this stuff so that they can maybe talk to their financial advisor with a little bit more intelligence and ask you know better questions and um, not necessarily just kind of leave it to the wayside. This is your retirement fund we're talking about. So um, I think that it's important just to just have a basic understanding of the stock market. So and who knows, once you start learning about it, you might even get super interested in it and want to start doing some investing on the side or, you know, whatever. Or be a little more involved with your financial advisor and, and, and um, talking to them about, hey, what about this stock? Or what about this, you know, index? So that aside, we're going to talk about three main terms. I want to de define each term and show the differences between each term because I think sometimes for newbies these terms can confuse people, get uh, interchanged and, and confused. So the three main terms are going to be one, stock market, what is the stock market? Um, number two is going to be what is a stock exchange? And number three is going to be what is a stock index? And so let's get into it. Okay, so when you hear the term stock market, this is a very general term. The stock market is just a general term to describe a place where securities are bought and sold. And a security can be one of three main things, which we're gonna get into in the next slide. But um, essentially when people are talking about the stock market, uh, they're not necessarily drilling down specifics about what what part of the stock market they're talking about. So um, when you hear that term, just know it's very general. It just means talking about something that is a place where securities are bought and sold, whether that's a, you know, U.S. stock market or European stock market or uh, uh, Asian stock market, we don't know, right? It's just a very general term. So there are three main types of securities. And the first one is going to be an equity security, which most of you have heard of. An equity security is Simp all it simply means is it's shares of a corporation, AKA stocks. So most of us have heard of stocks. Um, so essentially the first major security, AKA financial asset is an equity security, also known as shares in a corporation stock. The second major security is a debt security. And when we're talking about debt securities, what we mean are these are bonds. So what happens is corporations, governments, cities, states, they may need to fund projects. They may, they may not have the capital to be able to do this. So what they'll do is they'll issue bonds to the public. They'll issue basically uh, debt securities. It's debt, to the corp it's debt to the corporation. It's debt to the government or city or state. Um, to them, but to you, uh, you're essentially the bank. So what they'll say is they'll go to the public, let's just say um, Texas wants to build a library, a specific uh, city in Texas wants to build a library, Houston, okay, we use Houston. So Houston wants to build a library and um, they don't really have the money, so they issue um, debt securities to the public and say, hey public, we will pay you interest to borrow your money. So you as the bank aka bank you say hey you know what yeah I'll, I'd, I'd like to get paid five percent interest for loaning this money um here you go houston take my money and you pay me interest so essentially it gives these uh entities the ability to fund projects and then in return the public is getting paid interest for lending out their money at the maturity of the bond, because every bond matures, what happens is you get paid back the money that you initially um, paid for the bond, and then plus all the interest along the way that you've been getting all that all that time. So bonds are very, very popular. They are considered um, lower risk uh, investments than stocks. And so that's a bond, a debt security is a bond. Um, 
The third type of security financial asset is a derivative. Derivatives consist of futures contracts and options, which are probably topics for a completely different video. They can get a bit complex. So uh, we're just gonna leave that as it is. So a security essentially just has monetary value and can be bought and sold, AKA traded. So we've got stocks, we've got bonds, and then we've got derivatives, which consists of futures contracts and options. All right, so what the heck is a stock exchange? Is a stock exchange not the same thing as a stock market? Well, um, some people may call a stock exchange a stock market. Um, they can be interchanged. But a stock exchange, to break down the actual definition of it, is where securities are listed to be bought and sold by the public. So every uh, security essentially has to have a home. And that home is at the stock exchange. So most stock, the, the most popular stock exchanges in the US are gonna be the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, which you probably have heard these terms a lot. Well, um, these exchanges house a bunch of securities and a bunch of stocks. And then the exchange is actually considered an organization that essentially imposes rules and regulations for these firms to be listed on the exchange. So if these firms break the rules or um, don't come to code with certain things, the stock exchange can boot them from the exchange and they're no longer publicly traded, which has happened. Uh, many times. So if you're going to be listed, if you're a company and you're going to be listed on a stock exchange, you have to follow the rules, you have to follow the regulations. If you don't, you'll be booted from the exchange and you no longer can be publicly traded. Um, an initial public offering is also known as IPO for short. Um, and an IPO is essentially where a company is private. They're, they're not publicly traded on the stock market, on the stock exchange. And they decide that they want to get more exposure. They want to raise more capital. Um, so they'll say, hey, you know, we want to go public. We want to make our shares available to the public. So we're going to list an IPO, an initial public offering. And they have to go to an exchange to be listed on. And which would be the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, one of those major ones. And then once they're listed, they can be bought and sold by people like us. And so without the stock exchange, there is no stock market. And there are stock market exchanges all around the world. Um, every major country has its own stock exchange. Uh, I, I, I have here um, for our for United States, it's very popular, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. I do notice there's a, a grammar error there, so sorry about that. But um, London Stock Exchange is very popular, Euronext Stock Exchange, Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Um, you've probably heard of the Shanghai Stock Exchange, Tokyo. I mean, there are stock exchanges all over the world. There's even more than what I have here listed, actually, because um, I just wanted to list the major ones. And so just, this just gives you an idea that all over the world, um, stocks are being bought and sold in, on an exchange. So when we're talking about like the stock market, we could be talking about anything. We could be talking about any of these stock stock markets around the world. So stock market and stock exchange, those terms are often intertwined, um, but you can actually break it down even further and say, okay, well, we're talking about which stock market? Are we talking about the London stock market? Are we talking about the Asian stock market? Like the Hong Kong stock exchange? Which one? So I like to break this down a little further, um, almost to the ridiculous, so that people understand that you can get into more detail and hone in on one specific market. So I kind of already covered this, but consider the stock exchange to be the home of the stock. And if the stock didn't have the home, it wouldn't be listed to be publicly traded. And I put a little house here to ingrain that in your brain. But, okay, so what is a stock market index? Here's our third term, stock market index. This is where it gets fun. Because a stock market index, uh, this is what we actually use to figure out how stock, market is, how stock markets are doing. So stock market index 
measures a section of the stock market. And there are many types of indices that show us an idea of how markets are doing. So I just listed a few of them here. We've got the Dow Jones, we've got the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000, um, and then here's some international stock indices. So you can see that um, there are many different ways to kind of look at the market. Most of us hear about the Dow Jones. The Dow is up 200 points, the Dow is down 200 points or whatever, whatever it may be for the day. So when, when you're hearing about the Dow, um, you're actually hearing about a stock market index, but there's multiple stock market indexes. And often they do move together, uh, very often. Uh, they all represent different types of stocks within them. And let's get into that. So the top three U.S. stock indices are, for one, the Standard & Poor's 500, the S&P 500. The S&P, so all of these indices track different things. And um, so that's what you really need to need to remember here. And that's honestly the biggest takeaway of this video is each stock index tracks different things. So, so when we're talking about uh, one index, we need to make sure we're understanding, okay, well, this index tracks this, this index tracks that. So this, the S&P 500 tracks 500 of the largest companies that trade on both the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ Exchange. So the S&P 500 has become a very popular way to measure how our market is doing because it has such a, it casts a, a wide net. Uh, not only does it include stocks from, from both exchanges, but it also tracks the top 500 of them. So it's a very wide net, right? Now, when we compare that to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Dow only tracks 30 large companies. So there's a big difference between 500 and 30. So that's why the S&P 500 has become kind of the, the, the top gauge to see how we're doing. The Dow Jones usually includes successful household names. So names like Exxon, United Health, Home Depot, IBM, and more. Home Depot, sorry, uh, IBM and, and more. So these companies can interchange. Um, if one of these companies goes into distress or goes private, then the they will replace that company with another company. So um, that's a big difference between the two. We hear a lot about the Dow and the Dow is important, um, but the S&P 500 is, you know, it's got more stocks in it. So. That's a big difference between the two of them. And then the NASDAQ uh, tracks over 3,000 companies traded on the NASDAQ exchange only. So the NASDAQ has a very wide net too, right? 3, 000, over 3,000 companies, that's a lot of companies traded on this exchange. Um, and it, it, but it's only the NASDAQ, right? It's not including any of the New York Stock Exchange um, stocks. So. On the NASDAQ, we've got tech giants like Apple, Google, and Amazon. So if we're putting all of this together, Google is a stock. This is actually the something called a ticker, and a ticker is uh, usually a, a quick way to decipher between companies. So um, it'll either be four letters or maybe three, two, one letters. Um, it can... Uh, it can be uh, like for Walmart, Walmart would be WMT. So a lot of times the ticker kind of matches the name of the company, um, but Google trades on the NASDAQ exchange. So it trades on this, uh, it trades on, the NASDAQ is actually an exchange and a stock index. So it's actually both, I should have touched on that before, but uh, that can be a little confusing. So the NASDAQ is both a stock exchange and a stock index. So uh, Google trades on the NASDAQ exchange and is in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ index. So Google is in both of these indices here. Um, it's in the S&P 500 because it's one of the top companies in the world and it is on the NASDAQ exchange. So it's going to be in the S&P 500, and it's also going to be here because it's simply listed on the NASDAQ. So um, this is just kind of 
putting it all together for you to, to understand the, the differences um, between the exchange and the index and how companies can be on multiple indices. So let's recap. A stock market is just a broad term to describe a place where stocks are bought and sold. A stock exchange is the place where the security is actually hosted or listed on to be able to be bought and sold. So the stock exchange is the home of a specific stock and the top two are the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. Um, a stock index is a measurement of a specific section of the stock market. So a certain amount of companies might be listed on a stock index to give us a measurement of how a certain sector might be doing. And an index can be bought and sold just like a stock. Um, and when people say the stock market is down or up, they're usually referring to a specific stock index, um, either the Dow, the S&P, or the NASDAQ. So whenever um, you're watching the news next and you know maybe you're watching Bloomberg TV or, or something like that, and you hear, the Dow is up 200 points, or maybe the S&P is, is up, you'll actually know in your brain, okay, uh, the Dow tracks 30 large companies, the S&P tracks 500 large companies from both exchanges. You just decipher between the two and it just gets a little more specific for you. So um, hopefully this was helpful to break down the actual terms and have it make a little bit more sense. I know it can be a very overwhelming topic, um, but once you understand it, uh, you can dive deeper and deeper and deeper and actually be able to one day read your 401k and be like, yeah, I know what's in that. I know what that is. Um, so the next step from here is essentially learning learning what a dividend stock is, learning what a ETF is, learning how, you know, what a bond, how to buy a bond. Um, things like that are kind of the next steps. But this is a good baseline. If you need to watch it again, please do. Uh, sometimes watching, when you're learning about the stock market, sometimes you have to kind of watch things a few times before it clicks, but then it clicks and it's like, oh, I get it now. So um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.